the biceps brachii the biceps brachii is the muscle of the anterior compartment of the arm it originates from the scapula by two heads that is why the name indicates bi that means two and seps meaning the heads in this biceps brachii has two heads a long head and a short head the long head of the biceps brachii originates from the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula that is within the capsule of the shoulder joint and its tendon runs above the head of the humerus and it emerges from the joint through the intertubercular sulcus that is present on the humerus so this is the origin of the long head of the biceps brachii and its tendon run above the head of the humerus and then it runs in between the intertubercular sulcus that is present on the humerus and you should remember the long head is intracapsular but it lies extra synovial and now coming to the origin of the short head the short head originates along with the coracobrachialis from the tip of the coracoid process for a video on the muscle coracobrachialis you can click on the i button so this is the tip of the coracoid process and this one is the short head so this is the biceps brachii the two heads join together in the distal third of the arm to form a belly and this ends in a tendon and this tendon gives an extension that is the bicipital aponeurosis from its medial side and the tendon blend into the elbow so this is the belly of the biceps brachii and this is the tendon of biceps brachii this tendon gives off a bicipital aponeurosis to the medial aspect and then it goes and blends into the elbow this is the bicipital aponeurosis and the insertion of this biceps brachii is to the elbow that is in the posterior part of the radial tuberosity this is the insertion so the insertion of the biceps is the tendon that goes and inserts into the posterior part of the radial tuberosity and while the tendon is attached to the radial tuberosity it forms a bursa that is between the tendon and the anterior part of the tuberosity so this is the tendon this is the tuberosity that means the radial tuberosity and it forms a bursa in between the attachment of the tendon and the tuberosity this is the bursa and the bicipital aponeurosis is inserted into the deep fascia on the medial aspect of the forearm and this aponeurosis is very important because it protects the underlying brachial artery and the median nerve this is the bicipital aponeurosis and it is attached into the deep fascia on the medial aspect of the forearm and this bicipital aponeurosis protects the brachial artery and the median nerve the nerve supply of the biceps brachii is by the musculocutaneous nerve that is c5 to c7 and the actions of this muscle it is a strong supinator of the forearm while the elbow is flexed and this action is used in the screwing movement such as tightening the screw with a screw driver for a video on supination and pronation you can click on the i button the next action is it is a powerful flexor of the forearm while the elbow is extended and it is also a weak flexor of the shoulder joint the clinical testing of the biceps brachii is tested by asking the patient to flex the elbow against the resistance and when the forearm is supinated and while doing this testing the muscle forms a prominent bulge on the front of the arm and the clinical point it is the biceps reflex the biceps is tested during the physical examination by tapping the tendon by a reflex hammer while the forearm is pronated and partially extended at the elbow joint the normal reflex is brief jerk like a flexion of the elbow the normal reflex is a brief jerk like the flexion of elbow and this normal reflex confirms the integrity of the musculocutaneous nerve which supplies it it also confirms the integrity of c5 and c6 segments of the spinal cord brachialis 
The brachialis is a muscle of the anterior compartment of the arm. It originates from the front of the lower half of the shaft of the humerus. In superior to this origin of the brachialis, there is the insertion of the deltoid onto the deltoid tuberosity. So the origin is at the lower half of the anterior surface of the humerus. And this is the deltoid tuberosity that is the insertion of the deltoid muscle above. For a video on the deltoid muscle, you can click on the I button. In this muscle is the brachialis. The insertion of this muscle is onto the anterior surface of the coronoid process of the ulna including the ulna tuberosity. So the insertion is onto the anterior surface of coronoid process of the ulna. And the brachialis have a dual nerve supply. So this is the medial side and the lateral side. The medial two-third of the muscle is supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve and the lateral one-third of the muscle is supplied by the radial nerve. And the actions of this brachialis. The brachialis is called as the workhorse of the elbow joint. That means it is the untiring strong flexor of the elbow joint. Remember this, workhorse of the elbow joint. And it is a strong flexor. The coracobrachialis originates from the tip of the coracoid process of the scapula along with the short head of the biceps brachii. So this is the coracoid process of the scapula and it originates with the short head of the biceps brachii. And the insertion of the coracobrachialis is into the middle of the medial border of the shaft of the humerus. So this is the humerus and the insertion is into the middle that is 5 cm of the medial border of humerus. So this muscle is the coracobrachialis. As the name indicates coraco that means the origin that is from the coracoid process of the scapula and brachii means the arm. This is a short head of biceps brachii and this is the insertion. The nerve supply is by the musculocutaneous nerve and the coracobrachialis is a weak flexor and the adductor of the arm. So the action is the weak flexion and adductor of the arm. Now let's know the important anatomical events that occurs at the insertion of the coracobrachialis. And this is a very important landmark because many anatomical events occur in this level of insertion. This is the posterior compartment, the anterior compartment of the arm. This artery is the brachial artery. This nerve is the ulnar nerve. This green color is the medial intermuscular septum. This is the humerus. This nerve is the median nerve. The deltoid muscle. This green color is the lateral intermuscular septum. This nerve is the radial nerve. And this muscle is the coracobrachialis. So the first anatomical event that occur at the site of insertion of the coracobrachialis is the circular shaft of the humerus becomes triangular below this level. It becomes triangular below to the insertion of this coracobrachialis. In the brachial artery, it passes from the medial side of the arm to its anterior aspect. So the brachial artery passes from medial aspect of the arm to the anterior aspect and the basilic vein pierces the deep fascia here and the median nerve crosses in front of the brachial artery from the lateral side to the medial side. The radial nerve 
pierces the lateral intermuscular septum to pass from the posterior compartment to the anterior compartment. So this is the posterior compartment and this is the anterior compartment. This radial nerve pierces the lateral intermuscular septum and from the posterior compartment it passes onto the anterior compartment. And then the ulna nerve pierces the medial intermuscular septum to go into the posterior compartment. That means here. And the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and forearm pierces the deep fascia. Just like the basilic vein. And at this level, the nutrient artery pierces the humerus. The triceps brachii. The triceps brachii is a large muscle and it forms most of the area on the back of the arm. As the name indicates, the tri meaning three and seps meaning heads. And it have three sources of origin. It has a long head, a lateral head and the medial head. This is the long head and it originates from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. So this is the infraglenoid tubercle. That is the origin of the long head. And the lateral head arises from the oblique ridge that is about the spiral groove on the upper part of the posterior surface of the shaft of the humerus. So this is the origin of the lateral head that is the oblique ridge. And finally, the medial head originates from the posterior surface of the humerus that is below to the radial groove. So this is the radial groove and the middle head arises from the posterior part of the humerus below the radial groove. And this is the lateral head. The medial head is named because of the level of the radial groove that lies medial to the lateral head of the triceps brachii. And the insertion is by the common tendon that is inserted into the posterior part of the superior surface of the olecranon process of the ulna. So this is the insertion that is into the posterior part of the superior surface of the olecranon process of ulna. The medial head of the triceps brachii is also named as the deep head and few fibers of this deep head are inserted into the posterior aspect of the capsule of the elbow joint and they are sometimes referred to as the articularis cubiti or the subanconius muscle. So some fibers of this deep head or the medial head are attached to the posterior aspect of the capsule of this elbow joint and they are referred to as the articularis cubiti or the subanconius muscle. And below to the lateral head of the triceps brachii, the profunda brachii artery and the radial nerve are present. This is the profunda brachii and this is the radial nerve. The nerve supply of this triceps brachii is by the radial nerve and each head of the triceps brachii receives a separate branch from this radial nerve. So for the long head, the branch from the radial nerve is the nerve to long head of triceps that arises in the axilla and for the lateral head it is the nerve to lateral head that arises in the radial groove and for the medial head the nerve to medial head of the triceps arises in the radial groove in the actions the triceps brachii is a powerful extensor of the elbow joint and the long head of this triceps supports the head of the humerus during the hyper abduction of the arm and the clinical correlation that is the injury of the radial nerve in the radial groove. So if the radial nerve is damaged in the radial groove, the extension of the elbow and the triceps reflex is lost is because of the nerve to the long head of the triceps arises from the radial nerve in the axilla. So the extension of the elbow and the tricep reflex is lost. And do look at some of my recent videos and playlists.